Spare your people, O Lord. Be not angry with us. Attende Domine, et miserere, quia peccavimus tibi. Draw near, O Lord our God, graciously hear us, guilty of sinning before you. Prayer of St. Ephraim, the Lenten prayer of St. Ephraim. O Lord and Master of my life, take from me the spirit of sloth, despair, lust of power, and idle talk. But give rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to your servant. Yes, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own transgressions, and not to judge my brother, for you are blessed forever and ever. Amen. Today is the 8th of February, Monday. Monday of the third week of Lent in 2020. And the Feast of St. John of God, who truly poured himself out for others. He had been a soldier in Spain and other places, a, a mercenary. And uh, he had gambling problems. He had all sorts of problems. But he had a conversion experience. And he devoted himself to the sick, especially. And uh, especially in Granada, in Spain, uh, where he had to uh, stay inside his house and not leave because there were so many, uh, he was in debt to so many uh, for borrowing money for his hospital, which is still there in Granada, that he couldn't leave his house. He lived from 1495 to 1550. He uh, grew up as a farmer, and as I said, had become a soldier and tried being a merchant as well. But at the age of 40, he heeded the word of God, and from then on lived at the service of the sick in Granada, Spain. He founded what would become known as the Order of Brothers Hospitallers of St. John of God, a congregation devoted to the sick. And the morning prayer, prayer for the morning in the Magnificat on page 113. <clears throat> With humble and contrite hearts, let us adore the Lord. Uh, the song, the hymn is on page 113. Jesus, lover of my soul. <clears throat> <clears throat> Jesus, lover of my soul let me to thy mercy fly while the nearer waters roll while the tempest still is high <coughs> hide me O my savior hide till the storm of life 
be passed safe into the haven guide. Oh, receive my soul at last. <clears throat> well, maybe I should read the rest of it. <clears throat> Other refuge have I none. Hangs my helpless soul on thee. Leave, ah, leave me not alone. Till support and comfort, still support and comfort me. All my trust on thee is stayed. All my help from thee I bring. Cover my defenseless head with the shadow of thy wing. Plenteous grace with thee is found, grace to cleanse from every sin. Let the healing streams abound, make and keep me pure within. Thou of life the fountain art, freely let me take of thee. Spring thou up within my heart, rise to all eternity. I believe that was composed by Charles Wesley, the evangelist, the Anglican evangelist and priest, uh, whose brother Charles founded, uh, not intentionally, but he founded the Methodist Church as. Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. John 13, 8. Mark 1, 40, 42. A leper came and kneeling down, begged him and said, if you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. <coughs> I will heal them and lead them. Isaiah 57, 18. Now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. 2 Kings 5.15 I will heal them and lead them. I will heal them and lead them. The Intercessions on page 115. During Lent, the Church urges, renews the urgent offer of healing, the healing word and sacrament to all who call upon God in their need. And we pray, send forth your spirit, O Lord. Send forth your spirit, O Lord. You offer your people the word of life through all ministers of the gospel. Grant perseverance to all who are sent to preach and teach in your name. Send forth your spirit, O Lord. You wash away in baptism all the sins that mar your image in the human soul. Enlighten those who prepare others to receive the sacraments of initiation. Send forth your spirit, O Lord. You heal the sinner in the sacrament of penance. Grant wisdom and compassion to all priests as they minister the sacrament of your love. Send forth your spirit, O Lord. You call all peoples near and far to worship at your altar. Send laborers into the harvest to offer the gifts of word and sacrament throughout the world. Send forth your spirit, O Lord. O oh God, you sent your Son into the waiting world to give life in abundance to people of every nation and tongue. Speak to the world in our day through the eloquence of word and sacrament, faithfully preached, reverently celebrated, and profoundly lived by those who bear your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The meditation for, from the readings for the Mass of Monday of the third week of Lent on page 116. God often dispenses his choice blessings in the ways we least expect. Naaman, a highly esteemed and respected military commander, went away angry, feeling slighted at the simplicity of Elisha's prescription. Of course, he misses the point. Just like the disgruntled folk in the synagogue, God's ways are not our ways, and yet his ways are always good, always saving. When Naaman finally obeyed the word of the man of God, his flesh became like that of a little child, an image of what we must become spiritually 
little children to inherit the kingdom. The entrance antiphon can be found in the Magnificat of March on page 116 with the readings following. except for the New Testament reading which can be found on page 90 page 90, from Acts 7, 30-34. Also, in the Missalet that was passed out at Holy Family uh, a month ago or more, the, uh, it, the entrance antiphon and the responsorial psalm can be found on page 160 and 161 for Monday, March 8th. My soul is longing and yearning for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out to the living God. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who secure my portion. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners to repentance and new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. You seek out the lost. You became one of us, incarnate, you died and rose for us. As our one mediator, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. You will return in glory to judge the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your unfailing compassion, O Lord, cleanse and protect your church. And since without you she cannot stand secure, may she be always governed by your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings, from the fifth chapter, the first to the fifteenth verses. There were many people with leprosy in Israel, but none were made clean except Naaman the Syrian, Luke 4, 27. A reading from the book, the second book of Kings. Naaman, the army commander of the king of Aram, was highly esteemed and respected by his master, <coughs> for through him the Lord had brought victory to Aram. But valiant as he was, the man was a leper. Now, the Arameans had captured in a raid on the land of Israel a little girl who became the servant of Naaman's wife. If only my master would present himself to the prophet in Samaria, she said to her mistress, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went and told his lord just what the slave girl from the land of Israel had said. Go, said the king, the king of Aram, I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. 
So Naaman set out, taking along ten silver talents, six thousand gold pieces, and ten festal garments. To the king of Israel he brought the letter, which read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When he read the letter, the king of Israel tore his garments and exclaimed, Am I a god with power over life and death, that this man should send someone to me to be cured of leprosy? Take note. You can see he is only looking for a quarrel with me. Then Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his garments. He sent word to the king, Why have you torn your garments? Let him come to me and find out that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman came with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. The prophet sent him the message, Go and wash seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will heal, and you will be clean. But Naaman went away angry, saying, I thought that he would surely come out and stand there to invoke the Lord his God and would move his hand over the spot and thus cure the leprosy. Are not the rivers of Damascus, the Abana and Farpar, far better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be cleansed? With this, he turned about in anger and left. But his servants came up and reasoned with him. My father, they said, if the prophet had told you to do something extraordinary, would you not have done it? All the more now, since he said to you, wash and be clean. Should you do as he said? So Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. He returned, and with his whole retinue, went to the man of God. And on his arrival, he stood before him and said, Now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. The word of the Lord. The psalm is from Psalms 42 and 43. The Antiphon. The refrain, a thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? As a hind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Send forth your light and your fidelity, and they shall lead me on, and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? Then will I go to the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the harp, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, from the seventh chapter, the 30th through the 34th verses. I have come to rescue. A reading from the book of Acts. An angel appeared to Moses in the desert near Mount Sinai in the flame of a burning bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight, and he drew near to look at it. The voice of the Lord came, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. Then Moses, trembling, did not dare to look at it. But the Lord said to him, Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. 
I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their groaning. I have come down to rescue them. Come now, I will send you to Egypt. <laughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I hope in the Lord. I trust in his word. With him there is kindness and plenteous redemption. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke from the fourth chapter, the 24th to the 30th verses. Like Elijah and Elisha, Jesus and Moses, Jesus was sent not only to the Jews. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the people in the synagogue at Nazareth, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath, in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Leprosy is a terrible disease, and thank God we have a cure for it, although it takes time. And uh, menacingly, there seem to be strains of leprosy that, are, that have uh, evolved to overcome that. And it was especially feared in the time of Jesus because they didn't have any cure for it and they didn't really even know anything about it, you know, how it came about. So if anyone had this, the person was cast out of the community and they weren't going to take any chances. Even people perhaps with really bad psoriasis, so whatever, in the panic, they, people, they would be banished. And Naaman was wealthy, he was esteemed, he had all sorts of things going for him, but he was a leper. And so, and the, this slave girl who was an Israelite tells him about Elisha, the prophet, to heal, who can heal. And so... He goes, but when Elisha doesn't do so, doesn't even come out, doesn't even, uh, uh, you know, say words and put his hand over him, or doesn't, he just says, uh, immerse yourself in the, the River Jordan there. And... And then you'll be healed. Seven times, he says. 
And who was baptized in the Jordan? Jesus. Uh, later on. And why seven times? Seven is the number of, of fullness and perhaps evocative of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we receive in baptism and receive in an even greater way in the sacrament of confirmation. Well, anyway, Naaman is upset and he's going to stomp off, but his, his courtiers and servants calm him down and say, if he's told you to do something strange or difficult, you do it. Just do it. So he does it, and sure enough, he's healed. And so it is in baptism. We have the leprosy of sin. And <clears throat> many have the deadly leprosy of mortal sin. But we can be healed. God wishes to heal us. Yes, even to hear a lesson body, even if that full healing doesn't come about until the bodily resurrection on the last day. <laughs> but he definitely wants to heal us spiritually right now. So let us in spirit turn to the Lord who loves us. And know that the Lord Jesus has come for everyone. <clears throat> As Jesus preached there in the synagogue, and we have to remember Jesus is a practicing, shul-going uh, Jew. <clears throat> he points out that there were plenty of lepers in Israel, but it was Naaman the Syrian who was healed. <clears throat> and the people are so upset about this reminder that God loves everybody and that <clears throat> God's providence and care is for all <clears throat> and not just restricted to a particular <clears throat> ethnic group or uh, people claiming uh, descendants from the same person. <clears throat> not for everyone. And their reaction, they're going to throw Jesus off <clears throat> the top, off the cliff that uh, Nazareth is is by, but he uh, but he passed through the midst of them and went away. Maybe he pulled his prayer shawl up over his head and just mingled with the rest of the people, or uh, maybe it was a miraculous uh, deliverance. But uh, it was not his time. His time would be when he would be crucified, at when his ministry was completed, his ministry to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. For his ministry to the whole world would just be beginning with his death and resurrection. Let us turn to the Lord with all of our needs and cares and seek healing for ourselves and for the whole world, healing of body, mind, and especially of spirit. Let us pray in faith, hope, and love for the whole world and church to the Father in the Holy Spirit through our one mediator and redeemer, Jesus Christ, true God and true man. For Francis, our Pope, especially uh, on his pilgrimage to Iraq, that they, uh, his preaching and mission there may be successful for the pleading the plight of the Christians and others who are uh, uh, devastated there by uh, bigotry and persecution. For Sean, our Archbishop, for James, our pastor here at Holy Family, for Damien, my abbot at Holy Transfiguration, monks of Mount Tabor, for all who minister, especially for all priests, deacons, and bishops, for all evangelists and missionaries, 
for all those who, like St. John of God, minister to the sick in the church, <clears throat> and for all who practice the ministry of the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, for the whole church, for her mission and unity and prospering in spirit, and for the whole people of God everywhere, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation and all nations and peoples, for our government and for all civil authorities and all in positions of influence, especially uh, and, and uh, <coughs> especially parents, teachers, and those in the media, that they may lead us in promoting peace, justice, freedom, equality for all, growth in virtue, and the protection and advancement of all human life from conception throughout to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world, for the repentance of sinners beginning with ourselves, for growth in grace, and for all our spiritual healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those oppressed by any burden of life, for all the sick and suffering, for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially for the persecuted, especially for our fellow Christians, for those tormented in mind, for those searching but have not yet found the answer in God, for all those struggling in all the cares of life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our local communities, for all communities and congregations, for our families, friends and enemies, neighbors and co-workers and associates, for the needs of all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our deceased, especially for those who have died today or will die today, <clears throat> and for all those who have died by violence, especially in war or by murder or suicide, for those who have died in grace but unprepared, for, the, for all the souls of purgatory, especially those most in need of our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who grieve any loss, especially the loss of loved ones, that they may know the comfort and emotional healing of the grace of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the ever-blessed, ever-virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Word incarnate, St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, her chaste spouse. St. Patrick, patron of the Archdiocese of Boston. St. Batolf, patron of the Boston area. St. John of God, priest and healer. For Theophilac of Nicomedia, for Pontius of Carthage, confessor, Philemon and Apollonius, martyrs, Arianus, Theoticus and companions, martyrs, Quintilus of Nicomedia, martyr, bishop and martyr, Cyril, Rogatus, Felix, Herania, Felicitas, and companions, martyrs. Provenus of Como, Bishop, Ryan, Abbot, Beard, Bishop, Senan, Bishop, Felix of Dunwich, Bishop, Julian of Toledo, Bishop, Humphrey of Prom, Bishop and Monk, 
Duthlac of Ross, bishop, Veramundus of Hirache, abbot, Ogmund of Holar, bishop, Stephen of Ab Abazine, Cistercian abbot, Vincent Cadul Cadlubeck, Cistercian bishop, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ, <clears throat> to God and to man, our Lord and God, our Savior and Redeemer, <clears throat> our one hope, our friend and advocate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who filled St. John of God with the spirit of compassion, grant, we pray, that giving ourselves to works of charity, we may merit to be found among the elect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let's pray the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Through the mystery of this water and wine, may we share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sins. Love and may dominate. Blessed are, <coughs> pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May what we offer you, O Lord, in token of our service, be transformed by you into the sacrament of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affection, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Eucharistic prayer too. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, my Lord and my God, done this amazing thing. At my The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Ah, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Communion Antiphon. O oh, praise the Lord, all you nations, for his merciful love towards us is great. The body of Christ. Let us pray our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul, since I am unable at this moment to receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. May communion in this your sacrament, we pray, O Lord, bring with it purification and unity in your, that is your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. May your right hand, we ask, O Lord, protect this people that makes you entreaty. Graciously purify them and give them instruction that finding solace in this life they may reach the good things to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Eternal rest grant to our deceased, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen.
and I have to rush off to a funeral now of Dave, Dave Griffith, who was very active in on Honduras group. And so, uh, so pray for him, Dave Griffith. And uh, let's see who's waving today. Barbara Black Labembery. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Father Paul Ring. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Sheila Chambers over there in County Cork. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Joe O'Brien. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Denise Prow. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Kate O'Neill. Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Joan Watton Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Diane Walker Holden Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Walter Byrne Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Eunice Ediabonia Christ is in our midst. He is and always will be. Bye now.